missing a dvar Torah for parashat vezot abracha. There are two ways to stand out at a party. You can be the life of the party, or you can forget to show up. A short and unrepresentative poll I took this week, two samples, one that failed miserably and the other proved exactly what I wanted to prove, a bit biased, proved exactly the opening sentence. The respondents were asked to answer the following question as quickly as possible. What bracha did Moshe give Shevet Gad? What bracha did he give Shevet Zvulun? What Shevet Yehuda? And what did he give Shevet Shimon? The survey had two results. The first, an unexpected one, almost all respondents in both surveys answered with the bracha Yaakov blessed his sons and not the one Moshe blessed Bnei Israel. The second result, the one I tried to prove from the beginning, is that no one remembered Gad's and Zvulun's brachot, tribes that are not so central in Israeli consciousness. Yehuda's blessing, the center of Jewish consciousness, was remembered by a few, and the fact that Shimon did not get a bracha was remembered by all surveyed in the second survey. The first one, the results were different. Not that they disproved this, it's just that they weren't relevant. After this introduction, it's time to ask, as many commentators have, why didn't Shimon receive a bracha? Answers to this question can be divided into two. Up to Ramban, and from him and onwards. Commentaries up to Ramban find some kind of problem with the way the tribe of Shibon acts, which prevents Moshe from blessing them. First, Rashi, Ben Ezra, and others, Moshe was angry with them for having sinned at Baal Peor, so he didn't feel able to bless them. Or second, Ibn Ezra, Rabbi Yosef Bechor, Shor, and others, Moshe continued Yaakov's footsteps, who did not bless Shimon. The obvious problem with answer two, why then did Moshe bless the tribes of Reuven and Levi, who were not blessed by Yaakov, is asked and answered in different ways by many commentators, starting with the Tanaic Midrashim and ending with previously mentioned Rishonim. For example, Ibn Ezra says that Reuven was indeed blessed by Yaakov with the bracha of Al Totar, and once Levi had Aharon, the Levites merited a blessing. Ramban doesn't find these answers acceptable. As usual, he begins by quoting those he's about to disagree with. Usually, he'll do this with Ibn Ezra, but this time Rashi. And Shimon was not mentioned because of the sins of Peor, who were mostly Shimonites. Ramban points out four major flaws with this reasoning. One, the tribe of Reuven also sinned together with Korach, so why should they be blessed? Two, the sinners have already perished in the plague. Moshe wouldn't want the entire tribe to be wiped out, now would he? Three, the entire people sinned during the sin of the calves and spies, but since they've been atoned for, they were all blessed. Why does Shimon's sin prevent his blessing? And four, according to the Midrash, more families from the tribe of Binyamin were killed than from the tribe of Shimon, and they still were blessed. That's why Ramban and many of the commentators following him changed their thinking and answered differently. There's nothing wrong with Shimon's actions, but 1. It was necessary to choose 12 tribes. Those who read what I wrote about Parashat Dvarim may feel deja vu, for various reasons, some of which would be considered Kabbalistic. Dividing Yosef into two leaves us with 13. 2. Shimon is now the smallest tribe. 3. The blessing is related to land, and Shimon's land is with Yehuda. He doesn't get any land of his own. It is interesting to note that after Amban wrote his words, many commentators, such as Rabbeinu Bechaye, Chizkuni, and others, adopt this change and explain like him. Beyond the actual content, I derive several insights from this week's learning. One, I like making lists. Two, the fact that great minds before me thought a certain way does not have to prevent me from thinking differently. Three, polls don't prove anything. Four, it's more pleasant to look for pleasant things. Five, it takes only one person to lead a revolution. And six, I love Tanakh. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. You're more than welcome to also pass this on to a friend. You could also look for my new book, Echad Shoev Tanakh, now available only in Hebrew, in a link in the description below. As always, I am Dovi Holtz, one who loves Tanakh.